I've lost count of how many times people told me they have not built their Farazan yet because they don't have her C6. Practically everyone seems to think she's completely unusable without it. Meanwhile, for an entire year I used my C1 Farazan regularly. She was great. I even had her at C0 on my alt account and she was just as useful there. While pulling for Shen Yun, I finally got some Farazan constellations, enough to get her C6 at last. I was very curious to see if it would live up to the hype. Now you might assume that I'm a Farazan stan who has just been inhaling lots of copium so that I can play with my favorite, but that couldn't be further from the truth. She's actually one of my least favorite characters in Genshin. This dislike was strongest when she was first released. She showed up in version 3.3 with no introduction in game, running with 5 stars I intended to skip. I did like the outline of her backstory. She's a well-known professor in the Sumeru Academia who spent a century trapped in ancient ruins. She finally figured out how to escape, only to find that the world had changed so much that it was barely recognizable. I love this kind of setup, with its endless potential for subtle characterization and world building as the story compares and contrasts how culture has changed over lifetimes. Though, of course this concept would not get much attention since she is a 4 star. However, despite her interesting backstory, strong characterization and gorgeous design, there were two things about her which I could not stand. First, the most important flaw, her personality. I found her absolutely insufferable, though this did change over time as I'll explain later. Despite being a legendary scholar in the past, Farazan is out of place in the modern academia and fails to find her place in its institutions or connect with people. This frustrates her to no end and gives her some serious self-esteem issues, which she massively overcompensates for and she comes across as arrogant and dismissive as a result. Her trailer went hard hard on this, filled from start to finish with attitude and sass. I can totally see why some people adored her, but she was just not for me. While I could empathize with her situation, it felt a clear example of bad behavior induced by trauma, and while trauma is a valid reason, it is not really a valid excuse. I prefer characters who do their best in spite of their trauma, rather than ones who lash out with no remorse. To me, all of her voice lines dripped with disdain, and her insistence at being called Madam Farazan was an uncomfortable echo of those people in the real world who are obsessed with status and titles. I was happy for people who aren't driven up the wall by her tone of voice, since she is a great character on many levels, but I just couldn't stand her at first. The second flaw was her hair. Her design is just fantastic, except that the back of her head looks like she got bubblegum stuck in it and someone had to hack half her hair off to get it out. This is only a minor detail, but when you're running around the world, the back of your character's head is in your face the entire time, and the hack job legitimately bothers me to this day. Despite these problems, I was actually a little disappointed that I had to skip her debut banner. One of my earliest and favorite DPS characters was Xiao, and a support intended to buff animal damage felt long overdue. A few months later, in version 3.6, she was one of the main characters in the Parade of Providence event. Anyone who played the event got her for free, and I got her C1 from the standard banner too. Before we talk about how my feelings towards her changed around that time, let's give a quick overview of her kit, how I built her and why I was so surprised by her. She's an animal bow user with the usual lightweight normal attacks and infused charge attack. Her skill is pretty cool. She deals animal damage to nearby opponents, which is fairly basic, but afterwards her next charge attack becomes a vortex which deals animal damage, sucks in nearby enemies and also generates some particles. This can be a bit uncomfortable if you don't enjoy bow use but I quite like the level of control and variety this adds to the gameplay. Her burst is the main point of her kit though. She summons an Animo construct which moves along in a triangular path in the air. Each time it reaches a corner, it pulses, hurting nearby enemies, reducing their resistance to Animo and buffing the party's Animo damage as well. Her burst is essential to her gameplay and has a very high cost, and at the same time she struggles to generate particles for herself. As a result, she's one of those characters who needs to heavily invest in energy recharge, especially at early constellations. While building lots of ER can be difficult for some characters, in Farazan's case it's not a problem because her buffs don't depend on any other stats and her damage contributions are the only trade-off. 
I gave her Favonius War Bow since it had a good ER stat and allows her to generate particles when she crits. For artifacts, I equipped 4 piece Noblesse set so she gives a little more of a boost with ER, attack, and crit rate main stats while aiming for a lot of ER from the sub stats. This resulted in a high enough crit rate to consistently trigger Favonius passive and generate some extra particles, plus a fairly solid 240 ish ER. I would have hoped for more ER initially, but alas, the sub stat RNG was not on my side. Which leads me to why I was so surprised by the general advice surrounding her. So many people say that she needs something like 270 or even 280% ER to be viable at C0, and that if she's too far below that mark, she would be useless, since she would not be able to use her burst every rotation. I used her most in a team with Zhao, Layla, and Kokumi, and had absolutely no problems with her energy generation. I'm not sure if I did something different to most people, for example, maybe I had a stronger habit of funneling particles to her. But it has been very odd to see people say she's useless at C0. Maybe they're focused too much on maxing out her damage and fail to give her enough ER. She has a similar build on my alt account, just with a lower refinement bow and a little more ER from substats, and she's similarly comfortable. On that account, I use her to buff Hazel, which has been very fun. And again, I've had zero problems keeping her burst up on cooldown. Overall, I've just honestly been so surprised surprised that people said she was bad. In my experience, she's a fantastic buffer, and due to her reliance on her Favonius bow, she ends up helping out at least a little with other characters' energy recharge as well. This did make me curious. Were they underrating her at lower constellations, or does she just become completely incredible at C6? Anyway, as I mentioned before, her hangout and event appearances definitely helped me warm up to her as a character. While I'm generally not a fan of hangouts, hers was better than most, with some interesting storylines and solid characterization. The parts of her persona which get on my nerves were a little less prominent, and there was more focus on her backstory, so it was much less painful than I had expected. She really came into her own in the Parade of Providence event though, where her interactions with the other characters, Carver in particular, were actually really fun. She kept that abrasive edge to her personality, but seemed to mellow a bit and connect with the others a bit more, and I started to like her as a result. By the end of the event, she finally had what she wanted, the admiration of her students, a place in the world, and the beginning of some friendships to replace those she had lost. I can only be partially satisfied with the end of her story though. For it to feel satisfying to me, she should have grown past the need for external validation to fuel her self-esteem. Instead, she grew a little and then got what she wanted without truly overcoming her inner demons. Since she's more of a side character, the energy got doesn't feel out of place, but it's just another point where she doesn't quite hit the spot. Overall, to me she feels like one of those people who you have fond memories of, but who drive you up the wall when you spend time with them. Over the past year of using her regularly, it's been in the back of my mind that I'd like to put together a video about her, since my experience seems to be so different to the general consensus on her at low constellations. Finding the time is always a struggle though, and since other videos kept taking priority, it was being pushed down the queue again and again, until Shen Yun's banner. Farazon was finally present on a banner which I wanted to pull on, and I was lucky enough to get her to C6. I did not enable her content though. Instead, I decided to do some testing. I enabled them one by one on stream, and for the relevant ones, I tested with just Farazan and Zhao, then with Shen Yun's buff added, and finally with Furina's buff as well. Let's walk through what each constellation does and see whether they actually make as big a difference as people said they would. Her C1 gives her an extra hurricane arrow per skill use. While this is useful in rare occasions where you want a little more crowd control, it's not something I've ever bothered to include in my rotations. So in effect, it's no real improvement on her C0. A C2, in contrast, makes a big difference. Originally, her burst has a 20 second cooldown and a 12 second duration, so her buff is available a little over half of the time in a typical rotation. This constellation adds 6 seconds to that duration, so 18 out of 20 seconds uptime. When you take into account the time spent using her skill and aim shop and her burst animation in a typical rotation, this constellation essentially gives her 100% uptime. This is a great example 
example of my favorite type of constellation. It doesn't make her more powerful, but instead makes her more flexible and lets her work in more teams. For example, an animal hypercarry with long DPS window would benefit from this a ton. Her C3 increases the talent level of her skill, which just adds a bit of damage, so again, it makes very little difference, especially since her skill doesn't do all that much damage in the first place. Her C4 makes her pressurite vortexes restore a small amount of energy points to her. This isn't all that useful on its own. Her burst has a cost of 80 energy, so the 2 to 4 energy this restores per vortex, depending on how many enemies you hit, is nice but not a game changer. It does mean that the second hurricane arrow provided by her C1 is marginally more useful if you're really struggling to generate energy for her, but it only makes a big difference when you reach C6. Her C5 increases her burst talent level, which is pretty decent boost. It increases both the damage it causes and the animal damage bonus it provides. Her C6 is the one everyone raves about. It provides a new 40% crit damage buff to animal characters during her burst and also adds coordinated animal vortexes when dealing animal damage. These vortexes provide crowd control, generate particles and provide Farazan some energy directly via her C4. I was expecting this to be a game changer. Given how everyone raves about it, I'd expected it to drastically increase her buff, generate notice simply more particles and just generally make the team feel more premium. Instead, it was surprisingly underwhelming after all that anticipation. Previously, she was fine for me with only 240 ER and I had thought I might rebuild her with less ER and a stronger DPS build instead if this made a big difference, but I'll be keeping her build as is. Instead of being a game changer, it ended up just being a nice quality of life upgrade to make her feel slightly more comfy and slightly more powerful. The biggest difference it made for me is that I no longer care so much about catching some particles with her and instead can funnel them to somebody else. As a result, I strongly disagree with the general opinion on Farazan. In her niche as an animal buffer, she is great, and despite her reputation, she is not dependent on her C6. It's nice to have her maxed out, but she was more than fine at lower constellations too. If you've been holding off on building her until you get her C6, maybe it's time to rethink that decision. Overall, Farazan is a really unusual character. Normally, I either love them or I'm just uninterested. Even though I disliked her, she definitely grabbed my attention and I'm glad she got a little more likeable for me in the end, though sad that she didn't get more screen time or a more thorough arc. And in terms of gameplay, she's very much worth it, even if you don't have her constellations. She's a little bit niche, but if you have a DPS who would benefit from her buff, don't let the naysayers make you hesitate. She's well worth it in the end. Until next time!